All right, so in this video, um, we're gonna be talking specifically just about the oxidative phosphorylation, which is gonna be the final step uh, in cell respiration if it's gonna do the entire uh, process of respiration. Um, so I wanna kind of uh, put this out first. Um, remember, all cells can do glycolysis, but if there is O2 available, then pyruvate is gonna enter. Okay, so one thing we haven't really been, excuse me, discussing is, well, how does pyruvate know it's actually gonna do the whole thing? So there's actually a channel protein here uh, that's gonna be open if O2 is available, okay? Uh, now that, that doesn't go crazy specific in your text, but it, it makes some sense when you think about it. Um, if oxygen is available, then you're gonna go through and actually do this last step uh, requiring uh, oxygen. So uh, I wanna put this out before we get into this is that O2 is required for this last step. So if you forgot about the equation, right? So C6, H12, O6 plus O2 is gonna make your six CO2, right? as your byproduct, okay, plus six H2O, okay? So in this video, <clears throat> what we're gonna be discussing is, well, it's gonna be the first time that we actually see oxygen as a re reactant. Um, we've discussed in the previous video where this carbon dioxide comes into play. Remember that you lose some CO2 in this link reaction. You're also gonna be losing uh, your CO2 in this. Okay, in the citric acid cycle. So for one glucose, if we kind of put this into context, one glucose makes two pyruvates. Those two pyruvates make two acetyl-CoA's, uh, and for each acetyl-CoA, you're gonna lose CO2. So you actually lose two CO2's here. Uh, citric acid cycle produces four uh, CO2's in total. Um, well, two per turn, but it turns twice for glucose, so that's where that four CO2 comes from. So. Uh, we've kind of talked about glucose. Glucose uh, is the reactive, but now this is the first time where we're actually going to be introducing oxygen uh, into the overall cell respiration uh, equation. And another thing we're going to be discussing is how and where, so let's look at it here. Um, we're seeing O2 for the first time, and we're also going to be looking at water for the first time as well uh, as a byproduct. So all of this takes place in this last step. Um, uh, now, Let's kind of revisit the anatomy as well. We're gonna be looking at all of this intermembrane uh, proteins that are gonna be in here. So um, this last step called oxidative phosphorylation, uh, that's really gonna be the bulk of ATP produced, okay? It's called oxidative phosphorylation because you need oxygen for this step to take place. So when you think about it from that standpoint, uh, it makes this uh, quite a bit more manageable. So getting this thing going, let's take a look here at the biofix. Um, one and then we'll kind of show you all kinds of visuals to make this make some sense. So let's take a look here. Um, we will let this play out. So we've already talked about the citric acid cycle. Um, just to kind of remind you, um, remind us uh, kind of where all of this NADH is coming from. So I'm going to show you the citric acid cycle first, just to kind of recap this. Right. So here's citrate. We're in the mitochondrial matrix here. Um, and this is going to be where we make the bulk of our NAD plus is going to get reduced to make NADH. Like it leaves, right? And it's going to go to the electron transport chain. That's what this video is about. So you're pulling off the electrons. You're making a high amount of NADHs, right? Um, you make a little bit of ATP here, uh, substrate level. Um, but the key thing here is we're making a lot of these NADHs. And then this right here is FAD making FADH2, they're carrying electrons. Remember, all follow your electrons. The electrons are gonna be the key player in all of this. So let's look at this last step and see, well, where does this NADH actually go? Okay, why do we care so much about it? Uh, and it's gonna be on this last step called the electron transport chain. So when you take a look at this, let's see what's going on here. Uh, I'm gonna pause this real quick. Um, and if you take a quick look here, this is the NADH carrying the electrons. It's gonna dump the electrons off on these cytochrome proteins, okay? This is the electron carrier. Think backwards. Where did these electrons come from? Well, these electrons came from either uh, glucose. Uh, in that first glycolysis step, it came from uh, converting pyruvate into CO-CoA. It came from the citric acid cycle. So just keep track. Uh, these electrons didn't just come from nowhere. Um, so 
let's see what happens here. Um, when these electrons get donated, notice that you're pumping across these little blue spheres. Uh, these are protons, hydrogen ions. So basically, let's take a second and just appreciate how this uh, animation was done. Here's the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Here's the outer membrane. Remember, the mitochondria has two membranes. All of these things right here are your protons, also known as hydrogen ions. So basically, you're taking the energy from electrons, you're pumping these hydrogens against their gradient, and we'll see what happens next. So I have a green FADH2 here, so let's uh, kind of see what's going on. So uh, a lot of interesting things happen. Um, so it's showing the shuffling of the electrons first. Uh, that's where uh, we're going to focus our energy first here. So let's just keep track of where these electrons are going. Okay, the electrons are going to end up going from one protein to the next to the next. The electrons have to end up somewhere. Well, here's the electrons. They got to end up somewhere. So this is where you need oxygen. Um, oxygen, if you forgot from chemistry, is really electronegative, which means it really wants these electrons. So if you see this, there's oxygen picking up the electrons, and then it forms water as a byproduct. So O2 accepts the electrons. It's the final electron acceptor, and you form water. Now, what's up with all these hydrogen ions or these protons? Well, this is where one of the craziest enzymes ever uh, comes into play. These hydrogen ions pump through or go down their gradient via ATP synthase. This thing spins. As long as it's spinning, it literally takes a phosphate and an ADP and forces it together. And all we have to know is that as long as this thing is spinning, you're going to be making some ATP via chemiosmosis. So these protons diffuse down, this little turbine spins, and it physically forces on phosphates and ADP together to make ATP. So this is kind of the big payoff phase. Um, so let's take a quick look here. Um, this is just showing you um, a few things about this uh, on your electron transport chain. So I want to take a second and just uh, kind of highlight this first. So basically, NADH and FADH2, again, they're dumping off the electrons, OK? Uh, and the big thing here uh, that I want to take a second and make sure you guys appreciate and understand, oxygen is needed during this step, OK? Uh, O2 is the final electron acceptor. So the point of having oxygen here is picking up electrons, and then it forms water as your byproduct. So um, that's kind of the whole focus of oxygen. Um, oxygen picks up the electrons. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor, and you form water as a byproduct. So I like showing this one first. Um, so basically, here is the uh, mitochondrial matrix. Here's the inner membrane. Uh, you also would have an outer membrane right here. So basically in between this membrane, you're gonna build up a large concentration of these protons. Protons are gonna be the key player here in all of this, okay? So let's look here. NADH is carrying the electrons. They dump their electrons off. They go from one protein to the next, to the next. And then the electrons eventually end up on O2. And then there's free protons that are gonna to bond to it and you make water as your byproduct, okay? So just think backwards, where did the NADH come from? Well, it could have come from Krebs cycle, it could have came from glycolysis, even the link reaction. So that's where all of this is getting used, that's where all of this is being paid, paid off, right? Now, that's great. Uh, we figured out, okay, we can't just have electrons floating around, so they bind on oxygen, you make water as a byproduct. So you think about it too, like if you're doing a lot of uh, strenuous activity, you're doing cell respiration, you start to sweat, it's a byproduct, uh, is water. Now, the key in all of this is building up all of these protons in between the two membranes. Now, in between these two membranes, this buildup of protons is going to be called an electrochemical gradient. So, Basically, what this is explaining is that as long as these protons are getting built up, you're building up these high concentration of protons. You're using the energy from the electrons to pump these protons against their gradient just for them to diffuse back down through this enzyme called ATP synthase. Okay. Now, like I mentioned previously, um, you need to assume that the cell, or I shouldn't say the cell, the mitochondrion has an abundance of ADPs. It has an abundance of phosphates. As long as this thing is spinning, it literally uses mechanical energy to force this phosphate onto ADP. So as these protons diffuse down, this ATP synthase is spinning. As it spins, it literally forces on this phosphate and an ADP together to make your ATP, okay? 
this process is going to be referred to as chemi osmosis. And I got another slide here that explains it. So let's just kind of recap this. NADH dumps the electrons off. It pumps protons against their gradient just for them to diffuse back down through ATP synthase. As long as ATP synthase is spinning, it grabs a phosphate, grabs an ADP, and those things come together. It basically creates this wave-like uh, phenomenon where it forces a phosphate onto ADP, and it makes this process favorable. So remember, putting a phosphate onto ADP doesn't naturally want to happen, but if you build up kind of this vortex of this spinning, you're going to force those on together. So think backwards. What makes this ATP synthase work? Well, it's having these protons built up. You build up your electrochemical gradient. Well, how did those protons get there? Well, you use the energy from the electrons to pump them against the gradient. Where did NADH come from? Well, it came from glucose, the glycolysis, and the Krebs cycle, or citric acid cycle. So it's really interesting when you think about it. This is a much uh, shorter uh, point of view in terms of chemiosmosis, right? Uh, this last one is your ATP synthase. It just shows you the electrons end up on O2, making water. The protons diffuse down through ATP synthase, making ATP, okay? Um, and again, that ATP synthase is a wild, wild enzyme. As long as those protons diffuse down, it spins and spins and spins and spins and spins, okay? So as it's spinning, it creates this almost like vortex uh, energy, right? And you force it together and you make ATP, okay? So let's go back to uh, this simulation. Uh, I haven't shown you this one in this video yet, but uh, let's uh, do a quick recap. Um, so the bulk of all of cell respiration, this is the big payoff phase, this oxidative phosphorylation right here, okay? In the previous video, we've talked about, well, we've made all this NADHs uh, and we've made some FADH2. What's the point of all this? Well, it's this last step, okay? This is where you're going to be using all the electrons. The energy is really in the electrons um, to make this thing worth it, okay? So other than that, let's kind of keep rolling through and see what's going on here. Um, so again, this is really, really simple, um, especially when you think about it. This is the inside of the mitochondria. This is in between the two membranes, okay? NADH is going to be used, dumping off its electrons, really nice and slow, right? So there's the electrons here, okay? The electrons have to end up on something. So these, you're seeing that the protons go against the gradient. You're using the energy from the electrons. The electrons are going to end up on, go and jump from one protein to the next. The electrons end up on oxygen because oxygen really, really wants those electrons. Oxygen picks up those electrons. Then oxygen is really, really negative for a second, even more negative than it normally is, right? Uh, and then it's going to combine with these hydrogen ions to make water, okay? So this first one was just showing, well, the electrons from NADH have to end up on oxygen, and then it makes water, okay? Now, the next one talks about, well, well you built up all these protons um, in terms of this, and this really talks about uh, the energy of moving electrons pump those hydrogen ions into the two spaces, okay? Now, one common test question that happens a lot is, what is the pH right here? Is it high or low? And it's low. Uh, it's low because pH is a measure of how much hydrogen ions you have or how many pro how the concentration of protons. So the pH right here is low. Now these protons diffuse down through ATP synthase. And as they diffuse down, it basically creates this vortex and it makes that ATP actually combine. Now, again, it just shows you phosphates combined with ADP making ATP. This process is your whole uh, oxidative phosphorylation, right? Because it required oxygen uh, for this process to work. Now, under normal conditions, all the ATP is going to be used in this last step, okay? Um, so it's just showing you don't fixate on like the two hydrogen ions for one ATP. Um, that's not a requirement for you guys to know. You just need to know as long as this thing is spinning, you're going to be making a high, high, high concentration um, of ATP. So um, this is kind of a nice little overview chart of uh, respiration uh, in its entirety. Like if you're going to start with glycolysis, it takes place in the cytosol, substrate level phosphorylation, kind of a nice little cheat sheet. Um, but the key thing in all of this, again, is that ATP synthase is spinning. Okay. So just to kind of recap everything, uh, I hope this is somewhat helpful in terms of recapping the, big, uh, the bigger picture stuff. Um, the point of this is you're actually taking a process that isn't necessarily favorable, right? This is showing you electrons end up on oxygen, making water. Um, and as long as that is actually happening, um, you're building up these protons, okay? So high concentration of protons, 
or hydrogen ions as they diffuse down through ATP synthase. It spins and spins and spins and you're making a buttload of ATP, okay? As long as those protons are diffusing down, uh, it's spinning. Look at all this ATP that's being produced. This is the bulk of ATP produced here. Um, so oxygen is needed in this step. And I hope uh, when you think about the whole process of cell respiration, you now kind of see the value of why oxygen is needed. Um, oxygen is going to pick up those electrons. So thinking back here, um, I hope you can see the bigger picture of everything that's going on. So what's the point of glycolysis? Yeah, you make pyruvate, you make a little bit of ATP, but check it out, you make some NADH. And that's going to be used over here. Pyruvate uh, gets, you lose some CO2, but you also, it's not shown in this clip, but uh, you actually also make some NADH as well. Okay, what's the point of that? Well, those electrons are going to be cashed in, if you want to use that for lack of a better term, uh, to make some ATP. Citric acid cycle, like I mentioned in the previous video, you make a ton of NADs and FADs uh, really to be used in this last step. So um, that's kind of the last payoff uh, in terms of all respiration. Um, make sure you kind of see the bigger picture. And again, oxygen is needed for this step.